Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a MIDI region, insert MIDI notes into that region, assign a patch on a synthesizer associated with that track, modify the velocity of the notes in that region, and add continuous controller data in the form of pitch bend. To do this first, I'm going to create a track. It's going to be a software instrument track. I'll hit create right here, just one track. I'm going to close the drawer and inspector window, so I'm just looking at my arrange window. I'm going to name the track, and I'm going to insert a region. Unlike loops, where you have pre-recorded information, a MIDI region is an empty shell that you create, and then you insert notes into it. To do that, select the pencil tool, click at the beginning of measure one, and let's make that region four measures long. So it goes from one to five, and we'll loop that section so we can listen through it. Now I'm going to double click on that region. I'm going to double click that region and it will bring up the editor window. We have three options in the editor window. We can look at it as the piano roll, score editor, or step editor. For this project, let's use the piano roll and let's make sure you're somewhere near C3. What I'd like you to do is insert four notes, each note a quarter note long, which means the note will last one quarter of a measure. So from measure one to measure two, there will be four notes of equal length. Logic has slightly heavier bars on those quarter note markings. These are 16th notes right here, so you need four 16ths to make a quarter note. To do that, to do the same thing, I need the pencil tool. I'll come and I'll click near C1, just like I drew a region. I'm gonna draw a note, and it will put in a note that is a quarter note long. If it's longer or shorter, adjust it so that it comes out to the right length of the quarter note. Then I'm going to option drag that note, and I'm gonna create a second note, a third note, and a fourth note so that I have four quarter notes in my first measure right there. Now these notes you'll notice are going up the white notes on the keyboard. C is this first one right here. This next one is called D and this next one's called E. For this class, I want you to skip the black notes and just use the white notes right here, okay? So we're just gonna go up three notes and come back down one and then we're gonna replicate or clone that information three times. And then I'd like you to go ahead and option drag that last note across there and let's make that a little bit longer so when we listen to our incredible song it'll sound like this okay now I'm going to insert a new synthesizer on this track and I'm going to do that by clicking between the MIDI and the audio effects drop down boxes this is the synthesizer selector and you'll see that there are quite a few synthesizers built into logic I'm going to select retro synth right here Click it to open it. Now when I hit play, you'll hear a different sound. That's because I've changed both the synthesizer and the patch within it. You can pick different patches within the synthesizer and the patches are just preset sounds that a synthesizer can make. Once you're in a patch, you can adjust it using these knobs, but we'll get into that in the synthesizer portion of this class. To change the patch, click on the drop down box at the top and you can cycle through some of the patches that are already in here. I'd encourage you to take a listen to a few of them. There's quite a few different sounds in each synthesizer. If I click synth leads, antimatter synth sounds like that. Big synth sinker sounds like that. And cheerful melody. I'm actually gonna stay in cheerful melody because it allows me to show you the next thing that you need to do for your assignment, which is to change the velocity on some of the notes in your region. Now that we have the synthesizer and the patch set up, we can come back over to our MIDI track and make adjustments to it, and the way it plays back in the synthesizer will sound different. I'm gonna select these notes at the bottom here, the Cs that are at the beginning of each major, and I'm gonna change the velocity on them. The velocity is right here on the left. If you drag this slider to the left or right, it will adjust the velocity level. To the right will increase it, to the left will decrease it. Higher numbers mean louder notes, Lower numbers mean quieter notes. And you'll see also that the notes are changing. They become red as they get louder. So I'm gonna turn it up to the right here. And now when we play back this melody, we should hear the first notes of each measure a little bit louder. Let's take a listen. So my first note is louder, and then I can actually make my other notes quieter. Let me, let's say I wanna select all these notes in the middle here. One thing I can do is just click on the D, or the white note on the left, it'll select them all, and I can turn the velocity down on those. Let's see how that sounds. So 
So I've adjusted the velocity on the notes, which makes the synthesizer play back the notes differently. In this case, red notes or higher velocities play louder volumes. One important thing is that your patch must be able to respond to velocity. Not all patches do, so make sure that the one you select actually changes when you change the velocity. You can also view the velocity information by clicking on the automation window here. And a lot of sequencers will show that data like this. If I click on this drop down list and select note velocity, you'll see here that the red note has the highest velocity, the blue note has a lower velocity. And I can actually drag these up and down. So now I just drug all those blue notes up in there a little bit louder, a little bit quieter. So this is another visual representation of the velocity of each note over time. But for this exercise, we want to add some continuous controller information. This is note information, which means it has the start time, the duration, the velocity, and obviously the pitch. We're going to change it now so we can automate some changes into those sounds over time, and that's called continuous controller information. To do that, I'm going to select the drop down menu here, and I'm going to go to pitch bend because it's a really obvious one that we'll be able to hear. It's pretty easy to do this. I'm just going to click over in this area, and it will automatically give me a line. Make sure that your line is at zero. Sometimes when you click over there, it'll end up like 14 or 10 or something like that. Drag that line until it says zero, and that says I'm not going to change the pitch at all. But I want to change it here on this last note. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click before and after, just like we've done automation in other areas of logic. And I'm going to drag the pitch of that last note down. Maybe I'll wait until the uh, second beat of that fourth bar. Let's take a listen here, and you should hear the pitch bend at the end. I'm going to drag it all the way down, actually. That's it. We've created a MIDI region. We've added notes to it. We've picked a synthesizer, we've picked patches on that synthesizer, we've adjusted the velocity on notes, and we've added continuous controller information controlling the pitch of that synthesizer.